My name is August Carlstad, and I'm presenting on Parallel Split Shadow Maps, which are also known as Cascaded Shadow Maps. So a bit of background. Um, I was actually working on a project back in 2012, uh, which I titled Learn OpenGL. Um, I just want to get the basics of OpenGL and um, Vertex and Fragment Shaders. And I actually came up to this technique, but never actually implemented it. So this is a perfect opportunity to do that. Um, it's very bare metal, so everything um, is is programmed by me. Um, unlike rendered GL, there's no scripting. Um, everything's done in C++. And I've also uh, given a link here to a Git repository that I will be committing to. And if anyone wants to take a look at the code, then you're more than welcome to. Um, current prog uh, progress. I have simple shadow mapping. Um, I've been following, uh, I was following a few tutorials online that um, I found that uh, implement that, but parallel split shadow maps and cascaded shadow maps were just a bit too advanced for me at the time, so um, I'm about to do that. Um, anyhow, um, the terms parallel split shadow maps and cascaded shadow maps describe the same technique. Um, sometimes they're used interchangeably, but uh, PSSM solves um, the splitting techniques, so uh, we'll see that later. And then uh, cascaded shadow maps basically describe how you see the shadow maps if you're looking from above as like kind of a cascading effect. So what is PSSM? And um, it's a technique to improve shadows, especially for large maps. And a lot of the examples that uh, I will be showing uh, show like large uh, terrain and, and different environments like that. Um, basically, a shadow map um, is split into multiple layers depending on how far away um, the player is from it. And then uh, later, these shadow maps are combined into one and then sampled. Uh, and here's an image from uh, GPU Gems 3. Um, displaying each of the depth textures that are sampled in the scene. So the basic technique involves um, approximately four steps. So you first split the view uh, frustum into parts. You calculate the light's view projection transformation matrix, uh, generate shadow maps for each of those parts, and then combine them. And we will go through each of those steps in a moment. So first, uh, the technique for splitting the view um, frustum. Uh, the simple way is to just set the split positions by hand. And that's what I'm actually going to begin with because it's I just want to get this basic technique working. Um, after that, there's a few different advanced ways to do it. Um, one of those is uh, uniform to where uh, the split positions are just evenly distributed along um, the view direction, but this winds up uh, having the same issues that normal shadow maps do with aliasing. Um, so, so objects that need very detailed shadows um, actually have like pixelated shadows, and it looks pretty bad. Um, there's another technique which is a logarithmic technique, and so it splits um, the sh um, view frustum increasingly with distance, but since the shadows can be extremely close to the player, uh, it, it, it looks kind of terrible. And then the final um, advanced way to do it is the practical way, which is described in GPU Gems 3, um, and it combines the uniform and logarithmic techniques to overcome all of the previous problems. This image is describing uh, the split scheme with an overhead light. So you can see that um, C0 through CM are the amount of splits. Um, and each um, uh, section, V, is uh, one of the sections that we will have to render a shadow map for. This next image also shows uh, the splits from a top-down perspective, and this is kind of where the cascaded shadow maps term comes from. Um, as you can see, the first one doesn't have any splits, the second has uh, three splits, and continuing on. 
So near to the player, you can see that the split is small. That means more detail. When the player is close, you want to be able to see the shadows in a very like crisp way. And as, as the distance increases, we don't care that much about uh, resolution because the player is so far. This next image um, builds upon the previous, and we also see um, some examples of this shadowing technique. Um, in the images, you can see that red is the nearest, green is medium, and blue is farthest. So um, red is the highest resolution in this image. Uh, in the middle, you can actually see that there's only one split. So therefore, anything that's far away is still getting that same resolution, and it, it tends to look bad. So this is a visualization of the different split schemes. Um, the first one is a uniform split scheme to where you can see that each uh, section is evenly split. Um, like I said, this has some aliasing problems because of each uh, the resolution of each section is the same. Um, B is a logarithmic split scheme. So as you can see, very near the player, it's it's uh, the, the amount of space is very small, so you will get some issues with that and shadowing and, and aliasing as well. And then C is actually the practical split scheme, which is the most advanced, which combines the previous two. If I have time, then I will try to implement that. Alright, the next step is to calculate the light transformation matrices. So in a simple method, um, a simple method for this is to do uh, scene independent. Um, which means you take the light and you bind it to each split that you made in the previous step. Well, this is easy. It's not optimal because depending on like how many objects you have and how large the split is, detail may be lost um, for the shadows. An advanced method would be uh, scene dependent to where you take the light and you bind it to objects that cast shadows and then... Um, Basically, you're only getting the objects that cast shadows that you care about. Uh, this makes it um, increased resolution, uh, better better detail, and you do this for each of the splits. Um, this first image is describing the simple method. Um, you can see that the light um, is simply bounded to VI, which is the first view for them. Um, and this little, um, this guy is a shadow caster. That's all we care about. And he's projected onto this plane here. The image on the right is actually what the light is seeing. So as you can see, it, it just covers the entire section. And there's no, um, there, that's as simple as it gets. Now this is a more advanced uh, method, and instead of going over the entire view frustum, we simply um, narrow it down to whatever objects cast shadows. Um, this way we can have increased resolution for those objects, and the uh, caster here is that uh, dwarf guy, and the receiver is this enemy, and um, since we're we're a lot more specific in what we're rendering shadows for, the uh, resolution is drastically increased. Now this this is also an advanced technique, so I do plan on doing this, but it will be for the second iteration of the project. All right, and then the third and fourth steps are generating and combining the shadow maps. So the simple method is to just do it on the CPU. Um, Multiple passes are done for each shadow map. So you, uh, the first time around, you, you render the near shadow map, and then the second time you render the bit farther, the third time you render the farthest. And then um, after that, you'll just combine those um, into one. Um, a bit more advanced method is to just do a single pass, and then you have to use vertex and pixel shaders to sample those maps um, in the same pass. And then there's an even more advanced method, with uh, which I don't think I will get to, is using uh, geometry shader or instancing to do the same thing. Um, of course, this will per perform the best, but I don't, I don't 
know if I will have time to do that. All right, and this image is actually just showing the technique. Um, on the left, uh, we can see how the shadows, um, even near the player, are nice and crisp. Um, and as they get farther, they don't lose any resolution as they would with standard shadow mapping. On the right, we can actually see the splits that were made. So the purple section is nearest, and then um, green, and then red, and then finally in the distance we can see that the shadow maps aren't even being rendered because they're so far away from the player. And this is actually another image. Um, so this one has more than three stages, um, the pre like the previous had. Uh, we have red, which is extremely near the player, green a bit farther, blue, yellow, pink. Um, this technique looks quite amazing, as you can see on the left. So it's quite powerful. Uh, my next steps for the project. Uh, first, I have to find or create a map that can showcase this technique. Currently, I'm just using a small map um, that I wanted to get working with, like model loading and and texture loading. Um, the simple iteration of the project, basically, I will get um, cascading or parallel split shadow maps working. Um, I will use predefined split points. Um, that'll be very simple to do. Um, scene independent calculations of the light transformation matrices. So it's, it's not optimal, but it will work. And multiple passes on the CPU to render the shadow maps. After I get that working, then I will attempt to implement the logarithmic or uniform split schemes. Um, probably both just to get those um, both working. And then um, if I have time, uh, as, as you can see below, I will um, try to do the practical split scheme. Um, in the advanced method, I will also implement the vertex and fragment shaders that will um, prevent me from having to do multiple passes on the CPU to render each of the shadow maps. Um, so if anybody has questions, they can email me. Uh, my email is right there. Feel free to take a look at the Git repository. Um, right now, there's just some old code in there that uh, I committed when I was uh, moving computers, but uh, I did get my code compiling again, and that works. Um, oh, it does require uh, quite a few external libraries. I know I'm using, I think it's uh, GLFW for windowing, Glue for um, OpenGL extensions. Um, I'm using Boost for some stuff. So, so if anybody needs info on what libraries they need, then definitely send me an email. So thank you.